the first cold front of harvest has hit. It's only supposed to get up to like 98 today. That sounds glorious. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Thursday. Oh, I don't think I turned the camera on quick enough. So, when did I last talk to you guys? Is that Saturday or Sunday? One of them days? I don't know. Since then, chopper number three got up and running two days ago. And then immediately my chopper went down. Had a 90 degree fitting, decided to crack, drain my entire hydraulic system. Deer pulled off miracles. We called at five o'clock. They had one at the Denver warehouse. We said, get it here by morning. They marked it machine down and somehow that thing made the UPS morning flight. First time in a long time we've had anything that late actually show up. Now, oh, they did soft it. Um, sorry, confused by hay. This field has been cut. The first half of it, one day. The second half of it, four days later. <laughs> um, but anyways, so the part actually showed up. Now, Colton's machine went down yesterday, chopper number two, with a coolant leak. And when they were trying to put stuff together, a fitting on the back of the uh, overflow tank broke off. So, we've got a tank coming from Illinois, overnighted, with machine down. Hopefully, it's here. UPS shows up. The plane lands at 9. So if you go meet them at the airport, you can get your stuff right away. Well, now, we got to get these guys ready and then move back to the west. Got the fuel trailer doing its thing. Luckily, the hoses are as long as they are. I've got that up in the air so I don't knock myself out. It is now bolted solid, though, because the teeth where it folds already broken three days into harvest and the teeth are already broken what a joke really 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 stupid clouds we're on the move 804 I told trucks choppers in the field at 830 I think we're gonna be just on time we gotta go like 10 miles. Huh. Dally ho! It's always important when punching a hole, you keep the truck really close so I can fill the whole trailer. Or you be like this guy and leave enough room to fit a pickup in between us. You're killing me, Smalls! Come on! Just talking to Bart. Uh, according to the tracking information, our part did get shipped should be landing, should be on the ground by now. So hopefully, go in or somebody's on their way to deer to pick it up. But, they might also be on their way over here because chopper number three is having death issues. That has been the only frustration I've had with that chopper. He caught one load the other day, got derated because of a death problem. They found a sensor that was unscrewed on the exhaust, plugged it in, off he went. Today he cut reloads and it derated him. Did a hard reset on the computer, fired it back up, cut one load and derated him again. Well, Cameron still broke down. Colton just showed up with a demo machine from Deer. So that 9700 we got to play with this spring for you know, what, four or five loads. They're bringing it out this morning. I think they said we get it for like an hour or two fills in a gap, I guess, when we try and get another chopper room. Um, so they're going to keep busy there. Now that's opened up. I was told to move over here like four miles to cut on another guy's corn to go to another guy's pit. I think we have a hay crew running right now. I don't know. That sounds like mass confusion back that way. Nobody's talking to anybody like usual. I think the hay is raked and they were hoping to bale it this morning. Sinuses are going nuts right now, so I can't really breathe if it gets like. Anyways, I'm just I, I'm just lost trying to 
trying to lead a handful of trucks around. Let's go see what this next bit looks like. Well, hi guys. It's been about four hours since I've seen you. You know how long it's been? This field is done. So, two things. One, if you plant a pivot straight and make a furrow with it when you do it, I hate you. I think I am slowly getting the tuna convinced that when we come across that situation, the tracks are super rough to where we don't want to cross them, the tire tracks. But yet the truck's going to sit here and bounce all the way around because of the furrows. We've got to start charging more for chopping. That is getting ridiculous. We've gotten most of the customers switched to where they're all starting to plant circles. But we've got a handful left. And it drives me absolutely nuts. Point number two. Huge shout out to Jason and all the guys at 21st Century Equipment. Brought out a 9700 for his playlist. Worked out we had a chopper down at the time because we wanted to put a 12 row head on it anyways. All they had was a 10 row. I'm not going back to 10s. So we put our header on it. They said, you got two hours, then we got to get it to the next demo. We go, great. Then while they were bringing it out, another chopper goes down. So we we're down to only one of ours plus theirs. So they stretched that two hours for us till Bart and Glenn got chopper number two up and running. Now they're working on chopper number three. But either way, got to play with 9700. Here's my thoughts. It's less horsepower, yes. But because it doesn't have the restrictions of death, I believe that you are getting the same power out of it as you do with this 9800. This has death. That new 9700, if you don't know, Deere has spent the last 10 years designing this engine to burn clean enough that it passes the emission standards without needing death. The death systems on these Deere choppers are junk, and that's putting it mildly. That is by far our biggest breakdown in season with these is death problems. So the fact that they have a machine now that can do this amount of work and not need it is friggin' awesome. But that's why you guys, I mean to you I was gone for a blink of an eye, but I, that's why I wasn't filming anything in that field. You didn't get any film over here because I didn't want to carry the camera with me. I'm sure the deer guys didn't want a camera. So, it is what it is. Sorry. Maybe one of these days I'll be popular enough, I'll get confident enough I can hold a camera and talk to somebody, but right now that's yeah. There we go. Another field all cleaned up off in the distance. There's Chopper 3 with Bart, Glenn, and Cameron working on the death pump. Look at this map. Would you believe this was a full pivot? <laughs> Ah, weird things. Just cleaned up a handful of loads on a field. The guys cut it two days ago while I was cutting for our pit. They hit a bunch of mud, left a little, got it cleaned up, headed to the next one, one of ours, and Cameron just called. Chopper 3 is back in the game. So let's see what having 3 in a field does. That's going to be... Uh, Oh, it's a hell of a day. Three choppers, one field. Cameron's up and running. Colton's up and running. Mine is running. This is weird. One round of trucks did a number on this field. <laughs> you just need about five more. Come on, Trevor, let's go. Well, now we got us a new conundrum. Only two air compressors for three choppers. And only two parking spots for three choppers. Eh, we'll figure it out. Either way, guys, we had another round of trucks got half the next field cut, or damn close to it. It's amazing how fast three machines can knock out the acres. But, unfortunately, it sounds like I have to go cut sorghum in town tomorrow with the Zern. But good news for you is that means I'll probably see you guys again tomorrow. So.